America and the world have always had a thing for spicy, crunchy food. It's why every convenience store is packed with them. One spicy food that has become a global favorite is Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Launched in the early 1990s, the product line has generated billions of dollars in sales. What makes Cheetos more interesting is how it came about. Hi, and welcome to today's video, where we will be looking at how Cheetos became the global success it is today. We will also look at the story of one Mexican man who helped shape the destiny of Cheetos. So make sure you don't go anywhere. Before Flamin' Hot, there was Richard Montanez, born on the 15th of August, 1958. He was raised in a migrant labor camp. He had 10 siblings, and they lived in a tiny room in the camp. He went to a white school at an early age and had trouble speaking or understanding English. One day, every child in the class was asked to state their future ambitions. People were saying astronaut, veterinarian, doctor, etc. When Montanez's time came, he froze. In his own words, I realized I did not have a dream. Montanez struggled a lot in school. He dropped out soon after, opting to join his father on the farm instead. Working at 110 degrees Fahrenheit was very uncomfortable, but at least it brought bread to the table. But the bread was far from enough. Montanez needed a way out, even though he couldn't see one. Things got better when Montanez heard that a Frito-Lay plant needed a janitor. The pay was $4 per hour, $18 in today's money. It doesn't look like much, but it was a new life for Montanez. He couldn't read or write, so he didn't know how to fill out the application. His wife had to do it for him. He took the job application to the company, and he returned with the job. His family celebrated the big news. His grandfather told him something that changed his philosophy. Make sure the floor shines. Let them know that a Montanez mopped it. Montanez took the message to heart. He always made sure the floor was sparkling. Montanez always tried to make a positive impact. Despite working hard at cleaning the floors, he would study other parts of the business. He would learn about how delivery worked and how products were packaged. Montanez only got more interested in the company. All that interest would soon pay off. One day, the company CEO, Roger Enrico, shared a video with all the employees. In the video, Enrico told the employees to act like they were owners. Montanez took that message to heart and decided to start acting like an owner. This inspired him to follow a salesperson the whole day learning more about product distribution. While visiting stores in a Latino neighborhood, Montana's noticed that there were no spicy, crunchy products that catered to the Latino community. Later that week, he was buying spiced corn called elote. Suddenly, an idea came to him. What if I put chili on a Cheeto? Montana's continued to flirt with the idea until one night, he decided to test it. He got some unused Cheetos and sprinkled his secret recipe on them. Together with his wife, they tested different recipe flavors, looking for the perfect one. When he got the perfect one, he tested it with his family. His family loved the product. He then tested it with friends, and they loved it. He decided it was time to talk to management. He searched through the company's phone directory and found the CEO's number. Being an outsider to corporate culture, he didn't know that a janitor wasn't supposed to be calling a CEO. He rang the line, and the CEO's personal assistant picked up. She asked for his division, and he said California. She asked whether he was a top executive, and he said no. She asked whether he was a plant manager, and he said no. When he told her he was a janitor, there was a long, awkward pause. The next voice he heard was the CEO. Montanez explained that he observed the company and its products, and he noticed a demand in the Latino market. He also told him how he had created a product to meet that demand. Convinced by a confident-sounding janitor, he asked Montanez to prepare a presentation for him in two weeks. He was coming down to California. Montanez put down the phone, and it hit him. He couldn't read or write. 
how was he going to prepare a presentation for a CEO in two weeks? The only thing he knew for sure was that he wouldn't give up. He went to the library along with his wife. They would both copy five paragraphs from a marketing book word for word. When it was time for the presentation, he made sure he was looking sharp. He invested $3 in his future by buying a neat looking tie. As he was about to leave, his wife pulled him close and said, remember who you are. As he walked into the room, he was shaking. Here he was, an uneducated janitor, making a presentation to some of the top executives in America. Somehow he managed to nail the presentation. The height of the presentation was when one of the executives asked how much market share he was aiming to get. A scared and confused Montanez spread his hands wide and said, this much market share. That much market share. There was a brief awkward silence before the CEO said, ladies and gentlemen, do you realize we have an opportunity to go after this much market share? Montanez was asked to put his mop away because he would be coming with them. That same year, Frito-Lay started testing its new product in small Latino markets. Montanez would go out to the test markets and buy up the products to make sure that the top management would stick with the product. Friends and family helped him, those that wanted him to succeed. They kept this up until the product was scheduled for national release. By 1993, Cheetos started selling out in stores in America. Cheetos became the vital spark the company needed. Before then, the company was struggling with sales. There was brutal competition from another company called Anheuser-Busch. Flamin' Hot Cheetos became a huge success for Frito-Lay. The company had to expand its product line from three products to over 20. Montana's was a big part of the process. He soon became part of marketing. He also continued to create new recipes for Cheetos to try. He was a huge part of the marketing campaign that made Cheetos a hit, especially in the Latino community where he had a special insight. Years later, he was promoted to vice president of multicultural sales and community promotions for PepsiCo, the company in charge of the Frito-Lay brand. Montanez would also become a motivational speaker and author, sharing his incredible story with the world. The story of Richard Montanez seems like a classic Hollywood rags to riches tale, where the main guy rises from the depths of poverty, works hard, and creates a product that rakes in billions of dollars. It seems like a perfect fairy tale, and it just might be. You see, Richard Montanez started sharing his story in the early 2000s. At the time, it was only him sharing his story. The media got wind of the story, and it soon became a national sensation. Everyone fell in love with the story, and Montanez repeated the story in every motivational talk. By 2018, Eva Longoria had agreed to direct a biopic about Montanez. But in 2021, the LA Times dropped a bombshell story that claimed that Montanez's account of events wasn't true. According to the LA Times, a former employee had launched a complaint after hearing the story Montanez was sharing. Following the complaint, the company launched a formal investigation. Up till then, the company had never contradicted Montanez. When the company's investigations wrapped up, the details disagreed with Montanez. According to the investigation, none of our records show that Richard Montanez was involved in any capacity in the flame and hot test market. We do not credit the creation of flame and hot Cheetos or any flame and hot products to him. Apparently, the former employee that launched the complaint also worked on the product. Other former employees have also disputed Montanez's claims. At first, Montanez claimed that they were trying to rewrite his history. Later on, he said the following about the investigation. I was not aware of what might have been going on in other divisions of the company, and thus I do not have reason to dispute Greenfeld's accounts. This has caused a lot of controversy around a fairy tale success story the whole world has come to love. Now, did Montanez create Cheetos? We don't know. We know he says he did, while the company claims otherwise. But is Richard Montanez still a huge success? Obviously, 
from an uneducated janitor to vice president of multicultural marketing in one of America's top food companies is no joke. Richard Montanez was certainly hardworking in his life. From a very young age, he had learned the value of hard work, and that contributed to his success at Frito-Lay. From when he worked on the farm with his father to when he mopped floors at Frito-Lay, he was always doing his best to make a positive impact. It's why he could go so high in the corporate world despite his poor educational background. Whether he created Flamin' Hot Cheetos or not, he certainly contributed to some of the market success of its products. It's why PepsiCo released this memo after the investigation was published. The sincere truth is, at PepsiCo, we believe in the strength and power of teams, and we attribute the launch and success of Flamin' Hot Cheetos and other products to several people who worked at PepsiCo, including Richard Montanez. Far from being an urban legend, Richard had a remarkable 40-plus year career at PepsiCo and made an incredible impact on our business and employees, and continues to serve as an inspiration today. His insights and ideas on how to better serve Hispanic communities were invaluable and directly related in the success of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. To be clear, we have no reason to doubt these stories he shares about taking the initiative to create new product ideas for the Cheetos brand and pitching them to past PepsiCo leaders. One thing is certain, Richard Montana certainly contributed to the success of Cheetos. He did that despite the odds that were stacked against him. And he is an inspiration to millions of people around the world. That's it for today, guys. It was fun going through the controversial history behind Cheetos. But now we've got to go. So make sure you send us off by hitting the like button. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on our latest videos.